Hey, my name is Matt Storr, and I repair saxophones for a living, and the video you're about to see was actually made for a customer, just as part of a normal repair that we were doing. Um, but in it, I explained and demonstrated a fix that I haven't talked about yet for the microtuner, so I figured I would go ahead and upload it to YouTube so I can show it to more people. Um, incidentally, this is a you know the inner slide of a microtuner and a con C melody that I'm in the middle of working on. You can see it's got some problems on the end there. But anyhow, um, you know, the way I'm speaking in the video upcoming is because I was talking to a client, but I still think it's probably useful to see, and I'm probably not going to do that fix again anytime soon. So I figured I would go ahead and upload it. Uh, hopefully you find it helpful, useful, and informative. Thanks. Hey Dave, so been doing a bunch of messing around and looking around and thinking because your problem is not the usual problem. Um, and got a couple of different necks. This one fits yours uh, interchangeably. And um, wanted to talk to you about what I found. So, uh, like I said, it's actually airtight. Um, and this is completely cleaned out. There's a whole bunch of gunk in there. And this is kind of where it is set up, uh, where it's airtight and everything's installed like normally and there's no oil. So a little tiny bit of up and down. There's a good bit of back and forth, like in and out. This is pretty loose, but it does stay in place. But the threads on that, on the barrel here, are just loose, and that's all there is to it. But the more you screw it in, kind of the less bad it is when it's like hanging off the end. It's pretty bad. But Again, as far as it actually being airtight, it is airtight this whole time. Now, this problem here, what's happening there is that there's a retaining ring. This, that holds this in place. And there's a little lock screw here. And the the hole. Where'd it move to? There we go. There's the hole. Oops, it moved again. It's pretty loose. So it, without the lock screw in, that retaining ring moves. Okay. There is the hole for the um, lock screw. Now, when that's in place, this is the movement that we get, right? If we screw this in just a little bit farther, too far and it doesn't rotate, but just far enough and it still rotates, but much, much tighter, right? Now, if we screw that back in, in the correct attitude, nothing else changed. Make sure that that's screwed all the way in, that didn't unscrew itself at all. It did unscrew itself a bit. Okay, so it's real tight now, and then I back off just a little bit so that things can still move. Like, if I hold this, so this part is actually pretty tight. The only thing that's still loose is these threads. And also, this barely moves. I mean, a tiny, tiny bit, but they all do, right? Here's one. That moves. This moves a little tiny bit. This moves a bit. And again, this, this one's fairly worn, but this lock uh, screw here, I don't think this is all the way screwed in. We can sort of see the difference again. Let's see if I can screw this in so we can see. Okay, so there's the hole where it's lined up. And there's the motion. Now, a lot of times on these old uh, retaining rings, you'll see a second screw hole. Um, and I've never heard it directly from anybody, but I always assumed that was somebody just taking up play eventually, right? Like if we were to you know, screw this in to where it's as tight as it can be while still allowing motion, then we could just draw a little mark right here. Let's see where it would actually be. Like right around there. 
And that's only about, I don't know, a quarter turn, because that the original hole is right around here. Um, and that would tighten things up considerably. Um, now, as far as the rest of it, uh, there's not really an easy fix for the threads being loose between the barrel and the uh, neck itself. Um, it does feel a quite, quite a bit tighter when this is as tight as it's supposed to be. Uh, the tongues fit pretty well. Let's see if I can get this off of here real quick and show you. So there's the retaining ring, right? There's the original hole. Just I think it's just a 080 or maybe 172 hole. Just put another one like right here, and that way it would screw all the way in, and this would be held back against that ridge rim there, right? And still moves because this needs to stay in place while this turns, right? Um, but there'd be a lot less of the back and forth, and I think that's the majority of what you're feeling. Um, and as far as the correct attitude for this to be, that's like this. And this is airtight right now. Now, without anything else on it, let's see if I can steady it so that you can see. There's a little bit of up and down, but not so bad. It, when it came in, it was this way, which is a lot more. So it was actually, I know some of you told me, like, you guys put it in the way that was less wobbly but it was way more wobbly in the way it came in, and it also wasn't airtight. This is the way it's supposed to be. So I think, in general, um, the problem is different than we thought, not as bad as we thought, and I can get you 90% of the way there with a very, very simple um, fix that has precedent, and that is just to make this screw in a little bit tighter and put everything back together. Um, we could spend a lot of money and time trying to build up these threads with plating either on the inside here or here. Um, but I don't personally think that that's a good use of your time and money. I think you kind of got rabbit hold on this and it ended up being its worst possible version of itself because it was full of Teflon. It was inserted the wrong way. It wasn't airtight. Um, this is actually a very simple fix, I think. I don't think this is in nearly as bad a shape as you thought. A tiny bit of wobble. The way this mechanism works, it's just how it is. Um, if you're putting so much pressure on the mouthpiece while you're playing the differential between your hands and your mouth that it's like wobbling around enough to bother you, um, then that would be uncommon. But like I said, I think, I think the thing to do here is to do that simple fix and then go from there. Otherwise, I think we're just spending your money without any real um, you know, tangible improvement that I can guarantee. Uh, and I think it probably would be better to go in steps uh, to make sure that you've got a good outcome. All right, so here we are after uh, cleaning everything out, doing a new hole in a new place on the retaining ring and putting thing, everything back together with proper grease. Really just no movement and it's very smooth. So yeah, I think you're good to go, man.